Uh, the next issue is increasing the FICA rate. Um, it's interesting to just stop and calculate in your head what these implications would be. Um, I took a worker who's aged, who, who makes $45,000 a year. Uh, that worker, if you raise the Social Security tax by 1%, would pay $450 more a year in Social Security, um, $8 a week. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you look at, say, number 16, that's, you know, that's what that proposal would essentially amount to for a worker at that level. Um, number 17, it's splitting that between the employer and the employee, so $4 a week from each side. Uh, 18 is a little bit different. Um, 18 gets into the same concept we were talking about regarding the raising the cap and how far can you go, what's the balance there. Um, but this is essentially just establishing a tax on high earnings and funneling that money into Social Security. Um, and 19 um, is just a, a difference of how you schedule it when you put it into effect. Um, now, for individuals who say that Social Security benefits really shouldn't go down, you know, you, you end up having to look at the tax in some respect. Um, politically, it becomes very challenging. You know, everyone's afraid to propose a tax increase, but uh, it's hard to find the money to sustain benefits without looking in the tax direction. So um, really, there's only three ways to bring revenue in. Um, you can raise taxes, you can cut benefits or decrease your revenues out, or you can find some other pot of money, um, which is essentially raising different taxes. Um, and that's what the next two options are, uh, is finding a different pot of money. So uh, numbers 22 through 24, if those numbers correspond, um, are looking to um, generally to what would otherwise be general revenues um, or just creating different taxes. So uh, subjecting all salary reductions to FICA tax, if I think this is correct, this essentially means like taxing health care benefits. Is that correct, uh, Gina? Um, and perhaps some others. And uh, dedicating that revenue. You know, when you get health care your, on your job, there's a certain value to that which your employer does not have to pay income tax, you don't. I got it, flexible spending accounts, those kinds of things. Okay, well, um, so that's what that is if you heard it all. Uh, sort of a minor change, to be honest, either way, as far as impact on revenues. But um, the next set are looking to the uh, estate tax or the inheritance tax. Um, that's up for debate right now. You know, the estate tax has to be changed, or um, at least folks say it's going to revert to its former level. Um, and that's something that's very current in Congress right now. So one of the proposals is to say, well, why don't we direct revenue from that into the Social Security Fund? Um, then the last set of options is finding a different pot of money, which is saying, why don't we take some of the share of the revenues that Social Security now invests in bonds and then put that into some kind of an index fund or other general you know, fund that broadly mirrors the market um, so that it's not that someone is necessarily out trying to speculate with the Social Security Trust Fund, but is really just trying to capture what has historically been a higher rate of return that you get from stocks versus bonds, and then put that money into the Social Security Fund. Uh, the difference from private investment being that you get to actually maintain that level of guarantee because the fund still is able to offer a guarantee to an individual. So those are, are really the two pages that I wanted to go through. I think Nancy already covered the benefit improvements. Um, and you, you all will shortly begin to work through your options. Um, perhaps you'll come up with something else that is not on those tables, but uh, there you have it. So thank you very much. Look forward to, are we going to do questions? Or? Yes. Okay, good.